Hi guys, um, this is Sri Govind Rajlu, staff engineer for Jivabet Technology. In today's session, we are going to briefly discuss on how to create policies on Steel Central App Response 11 appliance. Um, so policy is nothing but alerts. So, so if you want to get alerted on specific thresholds, say for example, if you want to get alerts on a host group at the address or applications on certain metrics like throughput, retransmission, server response times, uh, or page times, if you have web traffic, um, if it exceeds certain threshold or if it falls below certain threshold, and if you want to get alerted, then you can go ahead and create policies. Without any further ado, uh, let's start with a quick demo here. So here I have uh, connected to, uh, I have a steel central app response appliance. Let's get logged in. Once you get logged in, you'll be defaulted to the home page. Um, this is a summary all traffic insight. Um, so this is a cool insight. It gives you a summary of uh, appliance performance, a quick um, snapshot. Um, so here in this chart, you would see total throughput. And here is the busiest applications, uh, busiest host groups, and servers, uh, the um, servers with the high server response time, and client IP. So this is like one, snap, one single snapshot to get a quick view of how your appliance is performing and what's the throughput and uh, apps, host groups, the busiest apps and host groups. Um, on the top right corner, you would see the version that the appliance is running, the platform, and the date. So in order for you to create policies, uh, and if you want to get alerted, if you want the alerts to come to your inbox, uh, then you need to have your email server defined. So to get your email server defined, you go to administration, email server. So once you're in the email server, you click on, you can configure your SMTP server um, IP address. And here you have different security options. Um, so you can use encrypted um, sessions. You can pick SSL or stock TLS if you want your emails to be encrypted um, or secured over the network. So from address, I would strongly recommend you changing the from address to a meaningful name. So here I put the appliance host name as the uh, from address. So when I get an email, I know it came from so-and-so appliance. Well, so here you configure your email server. And once the email server is configured, the next thing we do is configure the recipients. So, so here you can list the recipients who want to get emails from. You can add in. So I don't want SNMP, so I'm unchecking an SNMP, but if you want to get SNMP alerts, then you can go ahead and put your SNMP server IPs in here. Um, so it's tied with your email address. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. So first thing we did email server configuration, and next we configure the recipient. So once we are done with this, um, let's create um, a policy. Before we go ahead and create a policy, let's pick uh, the host group that we want to get alerted on. So in this example, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to create a host group, uh, uh, or sorry, a policy for a host group. Um, um, so here is the host group uh, table. So in this table, if you look here, I don't want to see. I told my ID guy not to send or uh, cut off, I told my network guy, sorry, uh, to cut the traffic 206 uh, not being fed to the app response appliance. I don't want that specific subnet to hitting my app response appliance. 
I can put a filter on it, but I really don't want that traffic to be fed to the box, even on the wire. So I told them uh, to cut it off. Um, so I want to get alerted when this traffic shows up on my appliance. Um, so this actually belongs to us. I want to send this traffic to a different appliance, say for example. So here I see a traffic of 261 MBBS for this particular network, um, which I don't want to. Um, so let's go ahead and create an alert on that. So you go back to administration policies. back to administration policies, and here you click on add. I'm going to say to this network, um, add application, oh, sorry, host group. So here you have drill down. You can drill down to host group, all internal IP address, and then application and C. But for now, as I said, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to do host group. And here, I want to alert on specific host groups. I'm going to say within, oh, wrong button, and I'm going to set 206 network, okay? Next, and the metric that I want to get alerted on is throughput. So I put throughput, so if it's greater than 50, I'm okay. If it's greater than 100, okay. I'm just throwing a random number. If the throughput is less than 50 MBBS for that, I'm okay. I really don't care. It's not going to affect the performance of my box. But if it kind of starts exceeding 50, then I want to start getting alerted. So here is my threshold value. And then I put um, one and one, which means uh, even if the alert occurs one time in that one minute time period, um, I want to get alerted. So here, you have to be very careful depending on the frequency of the alerts that you want to receive. Off. So if the traffic is exceeding or if it's going to be in that limit over a period of time, then it's good to kind of expand the time window so you can say if it exceeds one time in every one hour. Um, so that way it will look for the overall time period or if you want to have, I want to have 10 times in one hour time period. So one is the, uh, threshold got exceeded 10 times in that one hour period, um, then you're going to get alerted. Um, so you can play with it for a while, and if you start analyzing your traffic, then you would get a rough idea of how your alerting should be. And so that's what this is. So you click on recipient and uh, click OK. I'm going to do notify continuously for this testing purpose, but if the alert is going to be frequent, or in this case, it's going to alert me every one minute. Um, so sometimes it might be very uh, chatty in your inbox. So, so if you don't want that, if you want just to get the alert on the first time and not a continuously, then you can uncheck this one. Next is if you don't have your email address added in the recipient list, like we did before, you can just click here, add your email address, and that's the other option for you to do. So now let's go ahead and hit finish. Um, so now that we have this alert uh, enabled, um, let's go back and see where you can check the alerts that got triggered. So you have to keep in mind, under administration, it's called as policies, but if you want to view, then it shows up as alerts. So you go here, uh, there are two types, the traffic and system alerts. The system alerts is the overall health of the chassis. So there are only two system alerts um, that are defined by default on the appliance. You cannot define a system alert. All you can define, user defined is uh, just the traffic alert. So system is out of the box. So for now, we just got two system alerts. One is disk health and chassis health. Um, so here, I don't want the system alerts. I want traffic. You can name it, and then you can go ahead and hit launch. Um, probably we have to wait for it. We just created. Okay, let's give it a minute and then check back. 
So while you, we are waiting for this, let's uh, go back and show you the system policies. There are two policies. This is user-defined policy, and this is the system policy. The system policies, as I said, it has this health, Travis health. Um, so this is, you cannot change this, but even if you click edit, all you can do is just add the recipient uh, to get notified, but you cannot get anything other than that. Um, so you cannot modify or tweak the alert because this is out of configuration. Disk health, if there is a bad disk. Travis health, if there's something wrong with the appliance, so that's when it gets alerted. So now let's go back here and see if the alert got triggered. Yeah, there it is, so 206 network. So here is the alert ID, policy name, traffic, and if you see, it shows as ongoing alert. Um, so you can click on it, and that would kind of get you to the report. Oh, sorry, that takes you to the policy page. Yeah. So that's for the alert. I'm still, having, I'm still waiting for the uh, alert email to hit my inbox. So once I get my email, I'll show it to you on how it looks. So while we are waiting for that, let's go back to policies because I want to show you one more option there. So there's an option called import here in the policy page. Uh, so you can import, oops. There's an option to import policies. Um, so if you have, uh, if you had App Response 9 appliance, um, Steel Central App Response 9 platform, so you can export the uh, alerts uh, from the App Response appliance and import it to this appliance. Um, so that's the option for, and also you can import from other AR11 appliances and import it to this box too, so it works. But now that this appliance is coming, um, you can do it from AR9 and also from AR11 different appliance to this appliance. Or you can export from the same appliance, make some changes, put it back on. So that's the option for import. But for this demo, I'm going to see how to uh, do an export from AR9 and put it back in here. In order to do that, I have Steel Central App Response Console here. This is the desktop console. Um, it's a Java client. And you go to Tools, so Alert Manager. Actually, my session got timed out, so I'm kind of logging back in here. Okay, so here is, I'm just going to close this out. So here is the alert manager page, and I have two alerts. These are all actually predefined on the appliance. And the ones that say static are the ones that I have it before. Um, so I have one alert defined for business group, um, which is AKA host group on AR11. And I'm alerted on server response time. And um, I've scheduled it um, here to happen on all days. And the interval is I want to look for, I get alerted on every five minute period. Let me go when it's my email. So I do, let's see. Export selection, and I've already saved it, but I'm just going to do a save as. Okay. So now let's go back here. Here is the AR11 appliance. Choose file, desktop, alert, open, import. So 
once you're done, it would start showing up in here. It's enabled by default. These are the two ones. But if you go back here, you would see it's server group uh, because we wanted it as a server response time. So it called it as, as a server group default. And here is a server response time and the corresponding conditions. And here is uh, the recipient that we got defined. And here is the uh, import. So that's how you do imports uh, of policies from the different appliance. So now here is the email. I've got so many emails in here. <laughs> oh, within the past three, four minutes, I got quite a few emails. Um, so here is the report that you would get that came from AR1 appliance, and it's for the alert policy and criticality of the alerts and when it occurred. I will be attached with the report. And here is the report. It gives you the ID, description, and evaluation period. It evaluated for a minute and start time and the duration. Um, so this is more likely the fifth alert that I got, I believe. Um, the duration is five minutes. It keeps going and throughput because it exceeded the critical value. So that's the attached report. And if you use this link, it would take you to the home page and um, it will take you to the alert um, section. So here is the report that you get. So that would be the end of today's session on how to create policies um, and how to create and view policies. Um, hope it was helpful to you guys. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.